Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of The Content Barn. My name's Gary, I am the creative director here at Capital Content, and I'm going to be a host for this week's episode. Uh, normally, The Content Barn, you know, we chat about tips and tricks around uh, marketing in specific industries, but today we're doing something slightly different. Today, I'm kind of having a chat with somebody about their objectives around creating content and growing brand awareness, etc. Uh, and we're going to do it all live. We haven't spoken about this before, we've, we've tried to speak a couple of times, you know, there's a few time difference issues. <laughs> uh, but I'd like to introduce you to Simon Galt. Simon, how are you? I'm good, mate. Real good. Cool. Thanks very much for being on the show. So, Simon, you would class yourself, you know, as a you know a TV chef, celebrity chef in New Zealand. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I never intended to jump on TV. It just sort of happened, right? I ended up doing five uh, years as the as a judge on MasterChef. Yeah. And I've done, you know, my, had my own TV shows and all sorts of things, really. You know, Chef on a Mission, Descent from Disaster. I've even done a documentary called Why Are We Fat? Oh, yeah. Um, I've done a, done a documentary called, you know, What We Eat, so morphed into that health business. And how, how did you um, get into it? So where, did you grow up being a chef and then you just happened to go, I, you know, now I want to be famous or? <laughs> I always wanted a restaurant. I, you know, I love that sort of as a young kid I went into a restaurant kitchen and I just loved the way this guy seemed to be conducting this orchestra yeah right of all the, all these people doing all this stuff and it culminated in all this amazing food and I'm like that's for me so I left school at 16 and always wanted to, you know always wanted to cook and I got an apprenticeship did an apprenticeship then I went to the UK and I worked in the UK for three years came back to New Zealand at the age of 22 and uh, opened my first restaurant at 22 and then you know i've had numerous restaurants at one stage i had nine restaurants wow and then asked they asked me if i'd audition for this uh, master chef thing i was what the hell's bloody master chef i had no <laughs> idea and uh, i was going to be away when the auditions were on and so i didn't even audition i came back and i must have been bloody desperate gary because they gave me the job <laughs> and really i turned brilliant. up and and I did five years of judging MasterChef and then all this other TV I, stuff. I guess it all kind of came on after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. how have you felt? How did you find it going from running nine restaurants to now all of a sudden it's the TV stuff? Well, it was good. I've got no restaurants now. I've right. got an eight year old daughter. So I'm. That's enough. I'm a single dad. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm concentrating on that and it's morphed into. All these other bits. I used to be about thirty kilos heavier, so I lost a lot of weight. Hence, why they wanted me to do this documentary. Uh, why on. are we fat? Yeah. And um, you know, I've been running a health course called uh, Four Wheels of Health, which goes really well. And it's a, you know, it's an ability. You know, in a restaurant, you can put a smile on people's face, right? Yeah. You can, you know, you, I just love that. You know, that ability to make people happy. But when you help people lose a lot of weight over a period of time that's sustainable because yeah. all these people have done diets, right? Yeah. They, they lose a bit of weight. They put it all back on generally more. And, you know, when they, you know, you get growing men come up to you in a restaurant crying yeah. because you've changed their life. Um, you know, it was the most watched program, second most watched program on Qantas pre-COVID. COVID. Yeah and BBC Asia and all this stuff. So, you know, I get all these messages. You've changed my life. It's so rewarding. And yeah, I just I love doing that. I miss having a restaurant. I really do. But uh, for the moment, there's no restaurant. No. Okay, cool. So we know each other through your sister. Like I lived in NZ, yeah. so the listeners won't know. I lived in NZ for 10 years. Very good friends with both Will and Sarah. Uh, uh, I even lived next door for them for a couple of years as well, over in Ellerslie. Uh, and you, I assume, or Sarah might have mentioned that you obviously have your own YouTube channel. You do a bunch of live stuff on Facey and stuff like that. And you're looking, well, the quote was that you're looking to grow your YouTube channel. Well, I think she felt incredibly sorry for me, to be brutally <laughs> honest, because I, I started this YouTube during lockdown. I thought, you know, how can I help yeah. people? And so I'd literally open my fridge door and think, oh, what have I got here? And yeah. I'd start cooking. And, I, you know, behind me is my kitchen. I'd take the phone to the – Brilliant. Up and where the extractor yeah. is. It fell in, in the, the soup wire. one day. Yeah. I'd have 
I'd have the fridge door open, I'd take the phone to that. And so I got all this footage, and then I thought, how the hell do you edit? So I got a, an app on my phone, yeah. start editing. And, you know, a couple of years later, I suppose it's closer to three now, yeah. I'm sort of, oh, there's something in this. But I never watched anything on how to do it. Sure. You know, how to tag, how to get your title right. What was a thumbnail? I didn't even do thumbnails. <laughs> Brilliant. And, you know, it was just, you know, I was sort of all over the place. But it, it is growing. And I just, you know, I get so many people in the street go, oh, I've watched your YouTube and oh, I can cook a steak now. And, yeah, right. oh, nothing sticks on my stainless steel pan anymore. And, you know, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. So, I, you know, you, you know, the first goal is you think, oh, you know, I get to a thousand subscribers. And then, oh, if I get X amount of hours, I can monetize. I was so excited. I was can I make the hours? Can I get there? Yeah. Uh, before you know, in the in the one year time frame that they had, so I went all out and I got there, and then I was like, "I'm away now. I'm going to make a fortune. Yeah. This is going to be my new thing." I made nineteen cents in my first week. Brilliant. And Done you it. know, <laughs> and, it, and I'm sort of of the opinion I'm never going to know how it works unless I get some help. Yeah. Because it's you know, I'm a cock, uh, and try and persevere if i give up i'll never know right yeah absolutely and yeah. it is growing and how many subscribers uh, we got at the moment uh what have i got uh, i'd have to have a look uh is it three thousand okay cool so you are money so, so you're not doing too bad there right you've got a good foundation uh, yeah i'm yeah i'm getting a, about an extra uh, i think last 28 days i've had a hundred and something subscribers so okay it's, cool so it's, just it's slowly taking it on nicely over. right um so i think what we found there is that your objective is to monetize your content rather than to grow your youtube channel is really you want revenue to be generated from the content that you create rather than increase your subscribers increasing subscribers is like a is a metric that we want to obviously increase uh, but fundamentally you want to make a bit of cash out of it yeah, so it's, it's I mean, sell, you because know, the, yeah. because you, you could, if you got here, you could make money. I was trying to get that, but that's I don't really give a monkey's if I make money. Okay, cool. So I it's like a, want, a fortunate byproduct. I want views and grow it. Okay, cool. So yeah, raising it would be a good owners. byproduct. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, three thousand subscribers, on YouTube, great. I even saw a little bit of a Facebook Live, I think, a couple of days ago as well. Uh, so again, probably in the kitchen. And what did you do there? Did you just kind of go through an entire recipe? Is that what you did? Yeah, I copped a pizza because I have a business that sells food to people at home right. and to restaurants, yeah. which I've had for, you know, 20 odd years. And, you know, it's just showing we've got these amazing pizza doughs that you can buy and they're refrigerated or frozen and you can t make a Neapolitan style pizza. Yeah. So I was showing people how to stretch pizza, right? stretch the dough and make a pizza very quickly and look like a rock star. Yeah, and, the, and that's great. And you know what? That's kind of one of my ideas. So I think if we go back to the beginning, right, the, the objective is to raise brand awareness. And if we think kind of the main, uh, let's say, landing page or the main channel that you're going to use is YouTube, right? I think, you know, if people start following you YouTube and you say in your YouTube videos, hey, go and follow me on Facebook, whatever it might be. I think if we, if we direct everybody to your YouTube channel and then they can spur off from there, to go and have a look at your face or your Insta or whatever it might be. I, I think what we're what you're missing at the moment is, is trailers or ephoral content, short form content to help grow the long form content, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. as an example, uh, let's say you had your live show on how to create a pizza. Uh, what you you may have done this, uh, but what you should have done is maybe recorded a 15 second video a week prior to say, hey, Tuesday, two o'clock, I'm going to be making a pizza in, in two minutes. You know, a two-minute pizza, whatever it might be, you know. Oh, yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's exactly the same as a movie, right? You know, if you think, or, or you know, if, if we put our TV hat on, because actually that's where I think it's, it's come from, is that you are, let's say, of a certain age, and you have a TV background, and social is very different. And I think the you going live on Facebook is great, but... It, we're you know if we go if we apply the tv network strategy to social media we need to have an advert we need to have a trailer to advertise the fact that you're going on what's happened nowadays right we used to get home and watch 
Shortland Street at three o'clock every day, right? Uh, Then we moved to binge watching Stranger Things on Netflix on a Sunday, watching five episodes in a row on online. And now we've kind of gone full circle where we'll tune in at a certain time, but online, not on TV. So if you mm-hmm. are going to do, if we, if we just talk about your live streams for the moment, if we are going to do a live stream, it needs to be as if it was a TV show, but online. So every uh, Tuesday at six o'clock, people know that Simon Gault is going live. I'm going to teach him how to do X as a recipe, right? And it becomes your TV show, but online. And then what happens is you, you should never overlook the opportunity to create content from what you're already doing. So if, you, if you've if you done, let's say, a half hour recipe uh, from that live show, you can then cut a whole, you know, cut 10, 15 second videos from that 30 minute video that you've created. And that's really quite, well, I say it's easy to do. Obviously, it's easy for me to do. I run an agency, all right? But what you've got is that 30-minute video that you can chop up uh, or just a, you know, a highlight reel, a very quick cut, you know, throwing the, 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 the stuff in the pan, giving it a sizzle, you know, just the, the two seconds of every step. And then say, if you want to watch a full video, go back and watch my archived live stream kind of thing. So now we've got... And do I... Cool. Is this on Facebook that I should be doing it? Like the trailer? Yeah, and- yes and no, right? So it, what I would do is, I think Facebook is that proactive and YouTube is reactive, right? You're able to go out to your audience proactively via Facebook, whereas YouTube, if you were to go to YouTube or Google right now, you already know what you're going to search for. You know, it doesn't influence your search. Whereas Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, for example, that influences your search. You know, you watch a video on how to do a quick cut, create a steak, for example. Uh, then you go, oh, actually, that was too quick for me to follow along. I'll Google Simon Gort cooks a steak. And then the YouTube video, the 30-minute the YouTube video pops up, right? So it's about yeah. ha- having a, uh, yeah, a 30-second trailer. And whether that is you saying, hey, everybody, tune in next week to X. Or it's a quick cut version of what you've done last week kind of thing, you know? I don't know if you watch many. I- go on. I need to be consistent and have it on the same day at the same time. Absolutely. And consistency is super key, right? Uh, Because people will start tuning in at certain times, you know? And it's almost as if, and I've written here, it's kind of like productizing it, right? So turn it into a show. Simon got 60 seconds or 60 minutes or whatever it is, right? Uh, Actually create an online TV show effectively, right? It's, it's It's applying everything you know about TV and then putting it online. And it, and even if, you know, it's funny, it's almost kind of like you want to niche this program, right? So you said you did a show on Why Are We Fat, right? And I'm assuming that was kind of a, a number of episodes, three or four episodes, whatever it might be. Uh, mm. But every episode was about why people are fat. So it's about niching that content. If you were to now do a live show every Tuesday, six o'clock, have a certain theme on your show so is it i don't know jamie oliver does it sorry to say jamie oliver but you know he does like five ingredient meals or you know 20 minute dinners you know and all of those shows all of those videos are all 20 minute dinners how to do a dinner in 20 minutes and i think if you look at the likes of tiktok you know they are very much about diet well not diets but um, healthy living or living in a certain way. So high in protein, low in carb. So do you do all, all, all your, you know, one, the first season, the first 10 shows are all about high protein, low carb, cooking 20 minutes kind of thing. Because people will tune into that kind of stuff. You know, like I said, there is a bit, and, and you can use your experience or you know your social proof to say i've done all of these documentaries i know about all of this kind of stuff i am an expert in the industry about you know having healthy food high protein low carb and making it easy to do at home you know Mm -hmm. so that's the one thing around the live stream again just from uh you know being able to create the hours you know, because it's all about number of minutes and, and monetizing that content on YouTube. Let's say you've done a half hour, 45 minute live stream on Facebook, download that video and upload it to YouTube and just archive, you know, leave it there as a catalog. Because once people see one video, they'll go, oh, he's done a whole bunch of live streams. I can watch these. And then that's another half an hour per person to watch a whole show, you know? So put the... 
Okay, so I do a trailer. Yep. Hey, next Tuesday, six o'clock. Join me. I'm doing da 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 da. Yes. And then go live on the Tuesday. Yep. Then record, download, download that video. Put it on a playlist saying on YouTube. Live, live show or whatever. That's it. So now, so, that's brilliant. You've, you've totally clocked on there. So from just having a, a, a single half an hour show, what you're live, what you're now doing is you've got a trailer, you've got a 30 minute video live stream, and then you've archived that into YouTube without hardly doing really any extra work, right? Super, super easy stuff. Yeah. And I think absolutely you need to name it, name that show, get a logo created, go to fiverr.com, spend 10 bucks and make a, 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 a get someone to make you a logo on the TV show that you call it, you know, uh, get them even to do an animated thing, whatever it might be. So it's about repurposing that content. Once you've made a video for your Facebook, it doesn't have to stay on Facebook. You can download it, cut it up and put it everywhere. Um, the other thing that I thought about was I see you even try TikTok. Uh, in 20, 2020 <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah, that that you know. yeah it's great i mean you started and if you kept on you'd be huge by now you know because and like i've mentioned tiktok a couple of times i think what you could do and this is probably a bit more work in terms of finding someone who can edit up the videos that you can that you create you know what you want to do is just find a junior editor straight out of uni you know they're 18 and if Simon got rung up and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to send you one 30-minute video every week and I want you to create 10 videos from it, they'll, 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 they'll eat it up. And what they'll do is they'll cut it portrait. You know, you put it up on TikTok and it, all you want to do is, for example, when you do your live stream, like you said uh, in your kitchen, and you tape the phone to the ceiling, uh, to, sorry, to your cupboards to do a bird's eye, when you're cooking... Uh, to do your live stream, put a camera above where your pans are and just record that bit and only then post that bird's eye view over TikTok and cut those you know, those steps, you know? So now all you're doing is just putting one extra camera up and you've got a whole stream of content there to be able to smash out. So, so it's about yeah. not, what you want to do is not much extra work, but loads more video content and productize the content that you're doing. I think... No one, unless you know you are the, the the you know the big guys like uh, Jamie Oliver, for example, we're never going to make thousands from YouTube monetization. So, do you then think about sponsorship deals? You know, do you go right today? It is uh, I'm trying to think of a brand in NZ, but a, let's say a fish brand, right? And say so, right this for the next four weeks we're going to be making fish recipes or or whatever seasonal right and you can say okay cool let's bring in oh actually you're saying that you have a food delivery service right mm -hmm. so you could actually use that quote unquote as the sponsor of one season of shows and say right this season is going to be sponsored by x and, and you can see what i mean is now that's what happens on tv all the time and it's about apply you know mm -hmm. the, you know red bull sponsors x xyz now we're just applying everything that we're doing that you've done on TV and bring it into online. And it's almost as if like, you know, you, you probably got, oh, I need to do something totally different. And you know, that TV stuff won't work online, but actually it's just about applying that strategy, putting a sponsor on that they, they supply the food, they give you X amount of cash. Not only do you get to that content over your socials, but they have that content to post over their socials and that grows yours as well, right? For let's say Princess Tuna, for example, um, they will, or, or John West, whatever it is, um, they'll post it over their Instagram to say, hey, Simon Gold's made some exclusive content for us and all we've got to do is put up another camera, uh, another phone, you know, or an iPod or whatever, and just do the, um, uh, the bird's eye stuff over the pan. And if you think that was a 30-minute show, cut up that 30-minute show in, into 60 seconds. Because that one, yeah. you know, people will pause it or they engage or they'll bookmark it to watch it later. Uh, but fundamentally, it'll be too quick for them to go, run along with. And they'll have to go and watch the long form. And that long form content will be on your YouTube channel. And that's that extra view, you know. Okay. So you think persevere with the TikTok? I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. it's difficult. I mean, I, most of my battery goes on TikTok, right? I, I watch a lot of it. Uh, and I'm 41, right? I, I shouldn't be on it. I'm, I'm, I'm not dancing. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but the, everybody's on it. It is the most used app. Uh, and I think what, what it needs to be is raw stuff. I think if I looked at the, the three or four videos that you posted a couple of years back, they were very 
uh, clean and polished and pro, where actually people don't really engage with that kind of stuff on TikTok. I, I think what you do is have like the handheld camera, uh, give them tips and tricks. Tips and tricks are great, especially for cooking. Like you said, uh, you said something about not, st- um, not sticking to a pan, something not sticking to a pan, yeah. or how to cook the perfect egg, or how to gauge the five stages of cooking a steak, whatever it might be, right? If you can do that in 30 seconds, hey, everybody, I'm going to show you in the next 30 seconds how to cook an egg. Boom. If you want to you know, follow for more, yeah. for more tips, done, right? And you could, uh, and and this is, a, this is a big tip. So it's about batch creation. Again, you don't want to, every day, you want to wake up and make another video. What you want to do is on a Sunday, set your, your your studio which is your kitchen put all the cameras and lights up record as many videos as you can in that day and then schedule it for the next 30 days you know you you don't want to keep doing it you want to make sure i call it a good hair day i don't have much hair but if you're having a good hair day right you want to show everybody so if you if you've made a good video in the morning make another 10 but if you've made a rubbish video in the morning stop try again the next day because it, all the rest of them will be rubbish right so batch create short form content and repurpose long form content to go across multiple channels. What's good? I can see you scribbling down. What's good is this is actually a podcast, yeah. right? So you're able to now, uh, once this goes live in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to listen to this and pause and play and stuff like that. So um, there's loads of tips and tricks there. So I think fundamentally, what you want to do is raise brand awareness. And there's not much more you need to do. It's just about applying what you already know around the TV network strategy, applying that to your social media, uh, and using the content that you're creating to fill up all your other channels like Instagram, TikTok, etc. The key thing with all of these platforms is consistency. Tuesday, six o'clock, there's your cooking show or twice a week, you know, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you post out on TikTok, there's a tip. It's not about uh, uh, how many times you post, it's about when and where, you know, make sure you can do it in a frequency that you can handle. For example, LinkedIn, uh, people say, oh, you need to be posting every day. Yeah, man, if you want to post every day, that's great. Uh, but only if you do post every day for 365 days a year. It, uh, you need to, if you only have time to post once a week, post once a week. You'll get just as much organic reach as long as you're consistent. Every Monday, 8 a.m., you post over LinkedIn, for example, you know. So cons- consistency is super key. And LinkedIn's a good thing, you think? Definitely for personal brand. I I uh, I could probably say that seventy five percent of our incoming leads for our business is through my personal brand on LinkedIn. And everybody goes, oh, we know, you know, all, all our people aren't on LinkedIn; they're on Instagram and Facebook. It's like, well, no, everybody works for a living. They're definitely on LinkedIn. Uh, it's just that you're able to have a more professional conversation. You know, as an example, right? And this is a really good tactic. Um, and this might not sit specifically in your industry, but if I was to ring somebody up, let's say I was to ring up uh, Westpac and say, hey, Westpac, I want to make your content and charge you loads of money for it. They're just going to put the phone down. But if I ring up the marketing manager of Westpac and say, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? They will bite my arm off. Uh, so what I do is I write down my top 10 companies that I want to get in front of and I'll ask them, hey, do you want to be in my podcast? And then, so then at that point, I'm having a really solid marketing conversation with a person that I want to get in front of. So I'm not selling, but I'm showing them that I'm an expert in my industry. I'm building rapport and a relationship. And then after a couple of months, I can start seeding the sales stuff, you know? So personal brand, absolutely. But only on a B2B perspective, you know? I think you are probably more B2C, right? Business to consumer, where you're selling the product from the... Uh, your delivery service, and also you are trying to raise awareness in front of the consumer as such. Does that all make sense? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. So things like TubeBuddy, like to get visibility. Should I? You're familiar with TubeBuddy? I'm, I'm not. No, is, is that kind of like a, a platform to help push? It's to get key. It's like got keyword explorers, and then to help you tag videos so that you get more visibility on YouTube. That seems something I've only just started doing. Yeah. It's such and a dark art. I mean, absolutely. What's really key is a description, the thumbnail, the title, the tags. That's super key, right? You really do need to, yeah. uh, and it can, ta- you know, it can take a lot of, 
uh, you watching YouTube videos on how to do it all. Uh, I think at first, what I would do is um, look in, go to Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, uh, and just search for a uh, YouTube description writer, whatever it might be. Uh, and, oh, mate, they'll probably cost you three bucks. And someone will watch your video, write the description, put the tags in for you. You know, it's much easier to outsource the stuff that you're not very good at to make sure that it's done pro. And even if you do that for the, yeah. fir- even if you do that for the first couple of months and then you learn off the back of what they're doing, then you can start carrying it on. But if you, if you, sure. if you, you think about what your time times hourly rate is versus how much you're going to spend someone on Fiverr to do it, you're better off just giving someone else five bucks to do it, you know? And then you focus on your core business of actually creating the content. Yep, got it. What you really okay. what would be great is if you could just get a little social media uh, junior, you know, and pay them, you know, a, a minimal amount, let's say. But they've come. They might even be at uni. They need an internship. You know, you could advertise for an internship. Hey, right, send me a video CV, and you get a whole bunch of kids, little, you know, eighteen-year-olds that know how to do this stuff with their eyes closed, right? They're born yeah. with an iPhone yeah. in their hand, uh, and yeah. that might be, you know, you have like this little social assistant uh, where they can then, if when you do go live, they can answer questions uh, live. If people are commenting, they, you know, it's like having someone there actually answering the questions. Don't know how I fay your daughter is with social media, but you know, uh, I think you said nine, it might be a little bit early to get her, to yeah, get her eight, working. Eight, 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 she's probably a little young. Yeah. yeah. But if you get someone, yeah, can't, come, can't exploit too early. Can I? <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you, yeah, if you just, you know, say there's an internship going for the next six months, I need a social media manager, let's say, uh, and you need help with basic video editing, uh, YouTube description writing, and uh, community building with live streams. Mate, if I was 18 and I saw that, uh, I'd be up like, like a rapper drain pipe. Where do you sort of advertise for those sort of people, I wonder? How do you Social, po- post it on your Instagram, post it on your Facebook. There'll be mums and dads that will see that. Uh, and then they'll go, oh, hey, look at this. Or... Um, yeah, even, you know, you've got the name, you've got the personal brand to be able to email someone at Otago or Dunedin or whatever it might be and say, hey, I'm looking for a, a social media exec. Um, you know, is it, can you forward on my email? Can you post it on on uh, the University of Otago Facebook group? You know, I think you've got the name yeah. to be able to open the doors. But I, I think you could quite easily get a little intern for six months and I'm happy to, you know, chat to this person or, or, or build the job description for them so they know what they need to do, you know, because it is all about just basic editing using a mobile phone, uh, copywriting, so the descriptions, uh, and, uh, yeah, community building, so responding to comments. Or, uh, you know, like I said, if I was 18, I could tell my friends, oh, I'm running Simon Gould's Facebook page. God, it's huge for a, for an 18-year-old, you know, doing a business communications yeah. study or whatever it might be, you know. Yeah, generally when I approach somebody, they think I'm made of money. and that's Yeah, that's right. A huge, huge price tag to go with it. Yeah, I mean, but you could say, yeah, if they're still at uni, this could be an unpaid internship. Uh, but with the, uh, because uh, if, it, if it starts kicking off and it starts monetizing, then you could use that monetization to help pay for the exec, uh, sort of the social media manager, to then help grow that even more. And then sponsorship deals come on, more TV shows. And then you could get yourself another restaurant if you wanted. <laughs> Yeah. So look, hopefully I've, I've given you a bit of a brain dump there, right? There's yeah, loads, no, that's, loads, loads that's, of information. That's fantastic, Gary. I've got some notes here at a million miles an hour. I know, right? And I do, so, te- I do tend to talk. You know, like I said, there's a bit of a brain dump. There's loads of information, but luckily this is a podcast. You know, I think hopefully there's lots of other people scribbling down. Uh, and if you're listening, I think Simon's about to drop a job description for a, a social media exec. So look, Simon, thanks very much for yeah. uh, obviously being a guest. Uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit and like I said you can kind of go back over the podcast and have a listen listeners thanks so much for tuning in this has been the content barn very different episode but I think uh, it should actually work quite well lots of actionable tips in there Uh, you can listen to the whole back catalogue wherever you get your podcast Apple, Spotify or Google thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you again soon cheers cheers